Hello everyone and welcome to this new topic which is about how to convert the paper topographic map into a digital terrain model. I'm going to cover this important topic throughout two videos. In the first one, this session, I'm going to explain the methodology for converting a topographic map for producing a digital terrain model. And then in a separate video, that would be part two, I'm going to apply these steps for producing a digital terrain model using a real example from A to Z. Let's start this session. I summarize the main stages for converting the paper map into a digital terrain model in four main stages. The first one is scanning, second one is georeferencing, and then digitizing, and finally generating the digital terrain model, which is our aim. To convert the paper uh, map into a digital terrain model, first you need to scan it. Let's take this example. This is a paper map that I'm going to use later on for producing a digital terrain model. First, you need to scan this to a good resolution so that you can see the control lines later on in a good way. And I recommend that you scan your paper map to a 300 dpi dot per inch resolution. The scale of this map is 1 to 25k, as you can see here. So after you scan your paper map, you need to move to the next step, which is georeferencing your data. So in this step, you are going to define the coordinate system for your data and also to project the data. If we have a look here at this map, after you scan your map, it would be something like that. So it is an image, as you can see here in this example. So now you need to define the coordinate system used in this map. And for doing this, we are going to use the coordinate system provided with the map itself. As you know, guys, with any map that you have, any paper map, there would be some information on the map. Here, for example, for georeferencing this map, I'm going to use the corners of the map, this corner this corner, this one, and this one. So at least we need four points. And here if I select, this is point one. For example, this is point two. This is point three, let's say point four. Four corners of the map would be used for georeferencing this map. Now, if you are wondering, how can I get the coordinates for these corners, guys? Now, if you look here, let's have a look at this corner, for example. I'm going to zoom in to see some details provided with this map here. Okay, so for this map, for example, we have the coordinates of this point, this corner of the map. The geographic coordinates here. We have the northing. 53 degrees, 56 minutes and 42 seconds. And the west here, as you can see here, this is west, so W4 west, 2 degrees, 27 minutes and 26 seconds. So these are the geographical coordinates. And of course, you can use the projected coordinates in meters. Here you have the projected coordinates in meters easting and northing here so this is northing 450,000 and here easting 370,000 so let's return to our map now you know that here you have a set of coordinates that you can use here you have a set of coordinates here you have coordinates and here you have coordinates so as I mentioned at least you need to use four points and I recommend that you use additional points for improving the accuracy of your georeferencing process. For example, as you can see here, we have a grid lines here. Can select this point, for example, this point, the intersection point of two grid lines. And for example, you can select this one, this one, this one. You can distribute your points throughout the map to cover the whole map in a good way so that you can produce an accurate digital terrain model in the end. Okay, 
So let me summarize this stage here. After you scan your map, you need to georeference and project your data using at least four points. These are the corners of the map. The more the points, the better the accuracy that you will have in the end. And you can add more points using the intersection points of the grid lines. Now the third stage is the most important one for the accuracy of your final results of the digital terrain model. This stage is digitizing. You need now to, to digitize the contour lines on your topographic map. Let's have a look now here. This is the topographic map that I mentioned. And as you know, guys, with any topographic map, there would be contour lines with their elevations. If you look here, let's zoom in to see better the contour lines. As you can see here, there are a lot of contour lines in this area here. Guys, here, these are contour lines and there you will see a lot of contour lines throughout the map. But let's have a closer look. For example, if I zoom in here, these are the contour lines here. This is a contour line here. As you can see here, the elevation of this contour line is 450 meters. Okay, and so on. You are going to digitize or to trace these contour lines one by one. And because of that, I mentioned this is a time-consuming stage, but it is very important. And here we have the contour lines here. This is a contour line here, guys. The elevation, 435 meters. And here we have 450 meters, 460 meters, and then 75, 475 meters, etc. We are going to trace or digitize all the contour lines in our map so that we can produce later on the digital terrain model. And for this stage, guys, we are going to use a software, of course. And finally, after we have digitized or traced all the contour lines in our map, we are going to move to the last stage for generating the digital terrain model. And this is an easy step. Using the software, we are going to use some built-in interpolation methods for generating the final digital terrain model as you will see later on when we apply these stages. This is a shaded relief of the digital terrain model for that I have produced from the topographic map that I provided in the beginning. This topographic map here, guys, this one. I did all the work on this topographic map. I scanned this map and then after scanning, I did georeference this map and then digitized all the contour lines and after that, I generated my final digital terrain model. And I converted this digital terrain model into a shaded relief that you can see now. This is the final product. So now I believe that you have a good understanding or initial understanding, let's say, about the main stages that we have to apply for converting the paper map to a digital terrain model. In the second part, in a separate video, I'm going to use ArcGIS software and then apply all of these stages on a topographic map from A to Z. So I hope that this video was useful to you guys. And then in the second one, I'm going to apply all of these stages, as I mentioned. Enjoy your learning and I will see you soon.